Hi, and welcome to the first part of our discussion on modular programming. Systems are rarely designed by one person, and even if they are, it's good practice to make a product modular. A radio has several modules, the antenna, the tuner, the demodulator, the preamp, the amplifier, etc. A sustainable energy system has solar panels, a wind turbine, inverter, charge controller, battery banks. All of those are designed separately and independently, and then they're put together to form a complete system. Modular design allows us to break a big problem up into smaller, more manageable pieces. We can design, build, and test each module independently of the others. From this point on, all the programs you write will be modular, so it's important that you understand this material. So let's take a look at how software can be written in a modular fashion. Modular programs consist of several modules called functions. In other programming language th languages, they might be called subroutines or procedures. In C, we call them functions. So we'll take a look at a fairly simple program, one that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius, and see how the modules work together. I picked this application because it has modules of different types, functions of different types, and it pretty much uh, shows us all, all the different ways to use functions, at least the main ones. So if we take a look at this, we have a main program here called the Fahrenheit to Celsius program, and we have three functions built into this main program. We have a function called get input, a function called convert, and a function called display result. Here's what the program looks like when you write it in C. Okay, it's going to look a little Greek right now, and of course in C it would be one continuous, you know, straight down the page type of program. Um, I picked this application also because it's kind of small, and I apologize for the small print, but I wanted to get everything on one screen so that you could see all the, the whole thing operating at once. So over on the left hand side, you see the main module, and over here we see the three individual modules that, that main calls or, or uses to get the job done. So over here is the main function. Okay, you've all seen void main with an empty set of parentheses, so that's our main function. And in the main function, the main function calls three other functions to do the actual work. You can think of the main function as kind of like a, a manager who delegates responsibility. The manager oversees the whole thing, and these are the ones that actually do the, the, the grunt work. They get down and dirty and do the actual stuff. So these are the functions that the main function calls. So we have a function called get input, a function called convert, a function called display. So let's look at the big picture of the main function. We'll ignore the guts of the other functions for now. So let's take a look here. We've got, well, you already know about var uh, variable declarations inside of main. Okay, so here we have a function that says get the input and assign it to a uh, variable called Fahrenheit. Here's a function that says convert the Fahrenheit value into Celsius. So take Fahrenheit, convert it, and assign the result to Celsius. And here's something that says display the result in Celsius. Okay. Notice that with some good names here, I don't even have to put any comments. It's self-documenting code. Okay, so when you look at it as a big picture, it doesn't look all that complicated. This is why we break up programs into functions. It makes big programs manageable. So once we write the main function, we can look at the details of how the other functions will work. So we'll trace through the program to begin with as it executes, and I'll describe the parts, ignore other parts, okay? Eventually we'll discuss everything, but we'll just do it a little piece at a time. So in here we have a couple of variables that are declared inside of main, so they're only known inside of main and these are called Fahrenheit and Celsius. Float means that they're floating point numbers, that means they can deal with a decimal point. Okay, here's an assignment statement when we call the get input function. So we have the function name, and its result will be assigned to the variable called Fahrenheit. Remember that an assignment statement has usually a variable or a port on the left, and some kind of an expression or a value on the right. In this case, it's an expression, it's even a function call. Okay, this is the get input function that actually does it. So when it encounters this statement, when the main function is executing and it encounters this statement, the first thing it does, this is a call to the get input function. So the first thing that happens is main goes up to the get input function and starts executing here. Get input has a local variable called input, okay, also a floating point number. Uh, don't worry too much about the printf and scanf. We won't be using these in our programs, but this is, these are built-in C functions that uh, print something on the screen and read from a keyboard. 
Okay, these are for programs that are written on a, on a PC to actually run on a personal computer, not a microcontroller. But functions work kind of the same. So this one will display something on the screen, enter temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, and this waits for the user to enter something in, and it sticks it in the var variable called input. Okay, so let's say the user entered 42 on this line up here. Now, when it gets to this line, it says return input. That does two things. It's going to return back to the main function, and it's going to say that the result of this function, its value, is now whatever the variable input happens to hold, which is 42 at this time. So that 42 on this return statement, that 42 gets copied here. That becomes the result of this function, and it's assigned to the variable called Fahrenheit. When we call this the convert function, it's another function call, it's another assignment statement, so the result of this function is going to be assigned to the variable called Celsius. Okay, And again, it's going to go over, start executing here at the beginning of the convert function. We have another local variable in here. Oh, before we get to that, the first thing it's going to do though when it jumps up to this function is we have a variable in parentheses here and we have a variable in parentheses here. So this variable is going to be copied up into this variable. So convert needs some information from the main function. Get input didn't need any information in the main function, so its parentheses were empty. Convert actually needs something from the main function. You say convert, and it says, what do you want me to convert? Well, it's whatever number I put in parentheses, whatever value is here. So whatever was in Fahrenheit, which was 42, gets copied to this variable called f. Okay. There's a local variable inside of convert called c. Okay, we run a little assignment statement here, and it evaluates this expression. This is the formula for Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion. So what it comes down to is this equates to a value of 5.56. And then you already know what return c does. It's going to take, it's going to return back to the main function, and it says that the result of this function, its value is now whatever is in c. That's 5.56. So it's going to take 5.56 and assign it to the variable called Celsius. When we get down to the display call, okay, display is not, it, it's not returning anything. All we're doing is saying, hey, display this number out here. It's not returning anything to main, so we don't have an assignment statement. We don't have an assignment operator. We just say display, and then it says, well, what do you want me to display? This is what I want you to display. This is a variable called Celsius. So main calls the display function. It takes Celsius, copies it to this local variable in display called C. Okay, so C gets a value of 5.56. It prints that value on the screen. So 5.56 will, will appear on the screen. And then it returns back to main. Okay, notice I didn't need a return statement. When you get to the ending curly brace, it says that's the end of this function. So every function has a beginning and an ending curly brace. When it gets to the end, whether or not there's a return statement, it will always go back to main. Okay. In this case, we didn't need a return statement because we're not sending any information back to main. So here's the end of the main function, and the program ends. Of course, in a microcontroller system, the program never ends. We're running in a continuous loop. So that's the end of part one. In the next part, we'll see the rules and guidelines for writing your own functions.